Hello and welcome to KJ's Kitchen. I am KJ. I'm 14 years a master fitness trainer, a fitness nutrition specialist, and most important to me, I'm a happy mom serving up healthy meals from my kitchen to yours every Wednesday here on Facebook on the Get KJ Fit Fan page. So today we're running a few minutes behind. My sincere apologies. We had a little bit of technical difficulties getting going. That would be my phone was not acting very well for me. So I want to talk about, you know, all of January we were working on eating clean, doing some detox meals, detox juice, all those types of things to help clean your body, including cells. And now what happens in February? We're halfway through February. I'm sure there have been plenty of old habits creeping back in. So instead of letting those cravings of the amazing comfort foods we all love really trip you up and make you, number one, feel guilty, get bloated, um, you know, I think guilt is probably the biggest one. Um, one, one night with a big old bacon cheeseburger and fries isn't gonna kill your results. Now, every night with a bacon cheeseburger and fries will. And today we're gonna talk about pizza. Okay, so if you give your pizza this little KJ Kitchen facelift, I like to say comfort food facelift, you can eat it guilt-free. You won't get bloated. It's actually light. You're going to feel like, wow, I just enjoyed this amazing pizza and I don't feel weighed down. So gut health, guys, that is, that is the connection to brain health. So not only with the guilt, you also get more foggy brained when you're not taking care of your gut. Now, anyone, I'd love to hear in the comment fields, anyone been on the craze of cauliflower crust? You know, post, post below, let me know. Do you make your own? Do you buy it? Now, making your own, I've done it, and I've only done it once because it was a process. So unless you're planning on making lots of cauliflower crusts homemade and then freezing them, Hey, more power to you. At least you have them available in the freezer. But to just make a pizza and that cauliflower crust is a lot of work. You have to like wring it out so it's not so wet. You have to mix it up with cheese. Um, and then you spread it, cook it, and then bring it up and cook it again. So today I'm going to save you a lot of time. Now, what happens when you buy the cauliflower crust? Look on the ingredients. You're, you're actually eating a lot of corn, possibly potato starch. Um, you're adding you're adding in a lot of additives even if they are food additives it's not just cauliflower right so I want to introduce you to my happy cauliflower here and we're gonna set the oven real quickly for 400 degrees got it 400 degrees I want you to make sure you have a middle rack and a top rack two rack settings uh, I've already washed this awesome cauliflower head and I've already taken the leaves off for our amazing pet guinea pigs because I just learned that they can eat uh, ca cabbage, uh, cauliflower leaves. Bravo. Okay, so I washed it. You're going to be using two. I'm only showing you one because I already pre-baked one other head to conserve time because we're live and we don't need to sit it Sit and watch it in the oven, right? That could take forever for us to stare at each other while we wait. So start with your head of cauliflower and let me find my knife. Um, and so I'm just gonna demonstrate what to do. I got the big long stem still on here. And what I like to do is just cut the leaves off the stem. Instead of cutting the entire stem off as close as you can, you actually have a handle with that stem. So I want you to just cut the leaves off and leave that awesome stem. So I'm just like cutting into the leaves so they kind of come off easily. And now I can visibly, because I cut a couple off, see where to cut on the other ones. Just take those puppies off of there. If you have a guinea pig, you're gonna save those leaves. Even these thick ones, they may or may not eat them. I'm learning about guinea pig diet. Our sweet little guinea pigs are well taken care of with an organic array of vegetables every day. Uh, so those little puppies, they're not puppies, those little piggies are gonna have nice, long, healthy lives. Okay, so you see that big old stem? You might trimmer an inch, but you wanna keep the stem on until you're done cutting. Um, these will be for the pig, the piggies. I'll just go ahead and get rid of them, conserve some space, take care of those later. Okay. Now I want you to go right into the center 
find where you see doo -doo, two of the heads. So I, I like to see two of the stems and I cut right into the middle of those stems, right in the center. I got that right there. So two big old slices, right? And now we're gonna make what is considered to be called, especially in the vegan world, cauliflower steak. Hmm, what's that mean? It's a big old chunk of cauliflower. I'd say about a half inch, and that's a, that's gonna give me two big stems right here. It's cut, it's, I still have stem on both sides of this cut, if you'll see what I'm talking about. And you will notice things start to fall away, and that's okay. So the first cut is gorgeous, right? Perfectly, this amazing cauliflower steak. The second cut, I lost a guy. He's not quite connected, I'm not gonna push him. This guy fell off, but I'm gonna keep him. And I'm gonna rebuild with as many of the florets as I want once I get it on the pan. So let's save those little guys that fell off. And I have a baking sheet with parchment paper. I'm just gonna go ahead and get them out of my way for now so I can make space. Putting the cauliflower steaks on there. Here's the couple that fell off there. Two more to go. You get four really nice sized steaks out of a cauliflower head and with all this excess, you're gonna put it in a Tupperware and you're gonna chop it into florets and roast it for another meal. How cool, right? We're not gonna waste our cauliflower. Or you could throw it through the food processor and make cauliflower rice because that's another great alternative to using regular rice. Here we go, cutting about a half inch, getting this nice and beautiful steak, right? It's so funny, the vegetarians or the vegans call things steak, like, you're gonna call a big mushroom steak? <laughs> Here's our cauliflower steak. <laughs> I'm not making fun, I'm just enjoying, enjoying it, enjoying it with you. Okay, there we go. And again, this little guy lost a friend. I'm just gonna put that friend right back where he came from. And I don't know about you, um, I buy bread. Not every day do I make it, even though I like to make bread. But I use the bread bags again for things like vegetables because I don't want to get a baggie, like a, you know, the Reynolds, whoever Glad or whoever baggies, and waste more plastic in this world. So I like to dump out the crumbs, save my veggies. They don't need to be super, like, I mean, this is airtight because I just wrung it around. But that's a great way of saving your vegetables um, and not wasting as much plastic. Environmentally friendly, woo -hoo. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Again, for the guinea pigs, they can eat those florets, maybe they will. Let's prepare these. And I'm just gonna show you what's up. I've got melted butter right here. Why butter? Because when I make pizza dough homemade, I butter it. If you would prefer olive oil, go for it. I'm gonna butter one side with my little brush, melted butter. I do salted butter. Again, that would be your preference. I think salt brings out the liveliness and things. I butter one side, then I flip it. So it's got a little butter underneath. Now I butter the other side, okay? There we go. Buttering one side. If it's broken in florets, I just butter up those florets. Flip it over. And then I get these little florets. I kind of just put them in a spot. No big deal, because once we create the pizza, it holds together, I promise, even if you have broken florets. Um, here we go, get this guy nice and buttered on one side, flipped to the other. Doo -doo. Okay, so here's what we're doing to prep. Now, was this easier than draining, like literally with a cheesecloth, draining your cauliflower, squeezing the bejeebers out of it? Um, throwing it through a food processor, mixing it with cheese, creating a dough. Was that a little easier? Because right now we've got the base of our pizza. Boom. Easy, easy peasy is the KJ way. We pop it in the middle rack. 10 minutes. Oh no, we're not done. Don't go away. Don't go away. You want to season these puppies because I promise you cauliflower does not taste like much, especially once you cook it. So I've tried it a various ways. My favorite combination is using, or, uh, this is organic, garlic salt. Different than garlic powder. Now if you absolutely refuse to use garlic salt, you will use salt and garlic powder, but it doesn't create the same flavor. I don't know what that blend is, but it's a perfect blend in my opinion. 
So after I buttered both sides, I garlic salt pretty, pretty generously. Um, I garlic salt each of the steaks. So this is one head. You're doing two for a large dinner. Um, you will need a bigger cookie sheet or two cookie sheets, right? Or you just are going to use more parchment paper and smash them in and see what you can do. Next seasoning is Italian seasoning. Again, this is organic. Came from Aldi's. This one from Walmart. Now, as a New Yorker, former New Yorker, now I'm an Ash villain. Um, former New Yorker, whenever you go to the pizza shops, every single pizza shop's the same. It's going to have three, four elements. It's going to have garlic powder, it's going to have Italian seasoning, crushed red pepper, and dusted powdered Parmesan. And that's what you top your pizza with. So I don't ever make pizza without my Italian seasoning. Now that I have children, I don't always use the crushed red pepper, but if you like the heat, you might do that too. You're going to pop this middle rack and you're going to go for 10 minutes. Okay, so we pop her in. Alexa, set timer, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Now. All right, while you're waiting for that to cook, you're going to get busy on the toppings. So I like to prep my toppings in advance while this is cooking because once you put the toppings on, it takes nothing to just melt the cheese and get things ready. So I'm using Italian sausage. This one came from Aldi's. It's the brand Never Any, which means never any hormones, never any nitrites. Uh, vegetarian diet. Don't know really what that means for chickens because I think they should be vegetarian naturally. So who's feeding their chickens bacon? Um, so yeah, I think I just put that on there for people who think that eating a vegetarian fed chicken is any different than eating a chicken that eats a vegetarian naturally. Um, there we go. Anyone know any different? You know any chicken farmers out there who are feeding their chickens anything but a vegetarian diet? Because that is scary. Um, so this one came from Aldi's. Uh, I have a backup for a second. And this one came from Earth Fair. If you're not familiar, not Earth Fair. Oh, pardon me, Earth Fair's closed. Publix. Publix has the brand Green Wise. So both of these are it uh, Italian. This one's mild, this one just is Italian. So choose based on your palate. You could even do spicy Italian if you don't have children who are gonna be digging in on this and you really want it spicy. But we're going with chicken and the nitrite free. That's the most important. You'll do two links for both heads. I'm just doing one because I've only got one happening right now at a time. Got one done and one in the oven, but I'm gonna show you one for time's sake. Boop, boop, and then just finely chop it. Horizontal, nice and long, I go four ways. And then I chop it as small as I can and I pop her on a pan. Now why, why would I do this? Well, because I don't, once I top these pizzas, I wanna have crispy, delicious sausage, not just kind of warm, un, in my opinion, uncooked. It's already cooked, but I don't just need it warmed up. I would like it to get a little crisp. So I use avocado oil. You'll use whatever preferred oil you like there. And I'm just gonna give this a little, pardon me, this would not be how I would behave if I were on camera, but I'm, ooh, ooh, ooh. Paper towel. <laughs> I honestly don't love to cut, even though it's already cooked, don't love to cut meat and then start chopping vegetables. So I'm just gonna wipe this down. Already cooked so I feel safe. Um, there's no bacteria hanging out. Let's prep the other things. I like to just put it on my board, ready to go for when those cauliflower steaks come out of the oven. So I'm gonna be doing two types of pizzas today and I call it red and green. And that would not only give you variety at dinner, um, you might try them both and come up with a favorite. You might do your own thing all together and that's okay too. I'm using prosciutto. Uh, this one again was from Aldi, Appleton Farms. And I'm gonna recommend you use two slices of prosciutto today because I've got one going on right here. I'm doing one for this minute. Boop. And I like that they come on the paper, so it kind of pulls away for you. If you've never dealt with prosciutto, it can get pretty stringy, flimsy. Uh, and this paper will help you peel that away. So I use a scissor, makes it easier than cutting with a knife. And I'm just going to lay it where that chicken was so that the veggies aren't hanging out on the meat. And I'm just going to thin cut it. And they're kind of stringy and long. If you'll see this, I just go boop. See that piece, nice and long. 
So what is prosciutto? It is super thin cured ham. So it's like the skinny version of bacon. If you crisp it up, it's not got the flavor of bacon. It's more like a ham flavor. Um, and it's a very Italiano. So we've got some, in my world, the KJ Kitchen Italian pizza is coming on. So we got the prosciutto. And next we're going to, for this guy, and this guy, and this guy. Now I'm gonna do it half and half so I remember who's, who's on where. Green pie right here is gonna be capers. Doo -doo. Have you ever had a caper? Okay, these came from Walmart. The brand here is Mazzetta. And these are non apparel gourmet capers. A caper to me, the, reminds me of a mini, mini pickle, mini olive. I'm not sure. It's very pickly, but they're tiny. All, what they do for me and my food is they bring forward saltiness without like overbearing. It's not like, oh, olive tapenade or something. So that's the green going on my green pie and basil. I like to buy them organic, fresh little trees, leave it in the windowsill and let it keep regrowing. Just gonna get a couple slice, couple leaves of basil. There's like three large leaves. And I'm gonna prep him. I just lost the leaf. Yes, I did. Okay, prep him with the scissors because that makes life easy. Super skinny slices. Again, it's just it's the width of the of the leaf. Can you see that tiny little guy? Yeah, that's it. So now my green pie is prepped, sitting here. Those are my green pies. I can hear my sausage cooking up. Give her a little toss around. Yep, starting to brown. Keep an eye. So you see, you've got the cauliflower steaks in the oven while you're prepping the toppings. Once they come out, boom, back in, you're done. This dinner is gonna be head to toe, maybe 30 minutes. Um, now for the red pie. I'm using the sausage on my red pizzas and adding more red, I'm going with uh, roasted red peppers. Now this one came from Walmart. I love the Trader Joe's version, the fire roasted red peppers. I think they have an amazing flavor. I just didn't make trips to Trader Joe's this past week. So I bought these bad boys when I was at Walmart. Okay, fingers going in because that's how I'm rolling with it. Taking out a few of those and using the scissors again, or you could use your knife to make tiny little dices because you don't want giant peppers all over. These little pies are more like little personal pies. So you don't need giant pieces. I'm making them small. You could use a knife just as easy because these do cut very easily. But the scissors are right here that makes it easy too. I'm gonna go for one more. Here we go. Doop, doop, doop. Done and done. That's for the red pie. And last but not least on that red pie is shallot. Okay, you could use red onion. They're very similar. I think shallot's a little milder than red onion still. But you can go with the whole red theme and put red onion on here. I think a shallot even looks like a red onion once you cut it open. So I'm just gonna go maybe like that. If you're doing, you're doing two of these cauliflower heads, you'll use the whole shallot. Right now I'm just gonna use half because I've got half of it going on. Okay. Just like an onion, you're gonna peel that outer layer. You can see immediately it is very purplish, looks almost like a red onion. Just not as bold in color and not as bold in flavor. I like to go one direction through the half, so it's legit half, okay? And now from there, bottom side down, I am thin slicing. Now I do like to keep these a little long because they separate just like any onion and you can just pull them apart and have thin little onion slices on your pizza. Now if any of these ingredients you're like, oh, I would never do that on my pizza, then skip it, come up with your own. I've just tried these a few different times. This is the combination that I was like, boom, that's delicious. Everyone eats their pizzas differently. You can even make your pizza a vegetarian, right? Uh, let's check out our crispity goo here. They look great. Yes. Okay, last but not least, the thing to prep would be our cheese. 
we're gonna do about six ounces of mozzarella. This one came from Aldi's, um, I think it's like $1.60 for an eight ounce. And then some Parmesan. I use the block cheese. If you've ever subscribed to KJ's Kitchen, you're gonna not do the pre-shredded cheeses. Number one, they cost more. Number two, they're full of modified food starch to keep them from sticking. So you're just adding in more additives to your body. Don't do it. It takes two seconds to shred this yourself. And I already pre-shredded it to conserve some time. We're gonna build some pizza together right now. Mozzarella here, Parmesan here, six ounces and two ounces. Got it? Got it. Shred it yourself. Um, I think we're done with this sausage here. Oh, it's gorgeous. Take a look at this. You'll see why I, cho I choose to crisp this in advance. You get crispy sausage rather than just hot and soggy looking sausage. <laughs> So that's there. I'm going to leave it in the pan and we're going to pretend that Alexa told us, hey, it's time to get that cauliflower out. Um, these are, I, I gave them a little cook before you arrived. These are the cauliflower steaks already roasted. Alexa, stop. Yeah, well, that was round one of the roasting. Okay, here we are cooking together. We wouldn't be able to decorate these yet because it went 10 minutes in remove them, flip them 10 minutes in again. So it's 20 minutes to prep your cauliflower steaks. And I'll show you the difference already. This is round one. Very different than what I just showed you. Round two is gonna dry them up even more. So don't miss this step. Do you see the difference? It's the same size head of cauliflower. I bought two identical ones. This still has a lot of water in it. It's very different, so don't skip. Taking it out at 10 minutes, flipping them and putting them in for 10 more to get a delicious, more dehydrated version of cauliflower steak. So let me get that going. I like to use a small little spatula on there and be a little gentle. The ones that are one piece are like the best. Flip. And when I flip these, just so you know, the cauliflower florets that kind of fell off, I do a little flipping action too. Uh, flip those and here we go. What I like to do, and this is all up to you on how you roll, because maybe someone in your home tries to avoid salt. I like to, once I've done the 10 minutes, take a little sea salt and just do the top side because that side didn't get anything but butter. The top side got the garlic salt and the seasoning. Pop her in again. Alexa, set timer 10 minutes. So by that point, 20 minutes in, you've already finished all this. We actually finished all this already in that first 10 minute window. So not too hard. Now you can pour yourself a glass of wine while you wait for the cauliflower steaks to come out. And that's how I roll in my kitchen. <laughs> okay, let's talk about pizza sauce. You might just go with conventional regular pizza sauce, but I'm gonna teach you KJ's favorite. Um, we've got green pie and red pie. And we're gonna use green and red pesto. I think pesto pops that punch. It's just so much more potent of a flavor than just pizza sauce or marinara sauce, whatever you do in your home. Um, so we're gonna go with the red pie. So I've got four going on here. And sometimes you get a fifth one, depending on how wide your cauliflower is, you sometimes get a fifth steak. Um, and then you also, if you have more people to feed, and you need more, you could, with the side florets, make another cut and build it. Because like I told you, once you, um, once you get this all cooked up with the cheese and all the toppings, it holds up. It really stays together, even if you have PC florets. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, so I'm just giving a generous amount. You know, you kind of just decorate the heads, the florets. I'll give you a little view of this once I got it on. Nothing, you know, I, I try not to get too much going on to the pan itself. It's really staying on the broccoli, or uh, the cauliflower. Broccoli, oh, I guess you could do this with broccoli, huh? Then you really have a green pie. Uh, at least this gives you the illusion of regular pizza. Okay, gonna scrape, scrape, and a wipe on there. Going right in for the green. These, these pesto, by the way, I get at Aldi's. The brand is Priano. 
okay? And the regular is made of basil, and these are made out of sun-dried tomato. And if you have not tried this yet, it's so good on any form of grain-free pasta. We love lentil pasta. Any form of zucchini zoodles, noodles. Um, so, so good. Very, very awesome. Um, green, going green now on my other two. Here we go, a little green action. Do, 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 do. So I'm not shy on putting this on because it really brings out the flavor. The cauliflower, like I had said, is kind of boring on its own. So, rock those puppies. Do, do. Get a little on the stem. I'll show you how I doll these up. So you can see how much I actually put on there. You see that? Yeah, load it up. So just like you would any other dough or pizza, you're gonna dollar up with your cheese mozzarella first. Mm-hmm. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Perfect. And here, so I'm not even, at this point, I'm not following the tree, the tree branches. And that's what's gonna help hold it together. The cheese that gets melted is gonna hold it together whether it's PC or not. Okay, so you see I still have half my cheese left. That right there was probably about three ounces of mozzarella. And now I'm going into Parmesan. Because I did do the full amount of cheese even though I cut everything else in half right here. Now I'm just sprinkling Parmesan. To me, you could skip this if you're not wanting to buy two cheeses, you're conserving your budget. But Parmesan adds a really delicious level of saltiness. Here I am talking about salt all day. Um, that I think really shifts the flavor of the pizza more than just mozzarella itself. Optional, again, to you. Some people do that powder dried up stuff. Again, you'll do what you do. Uh, I just show you the way that I find tastes the best. My girlfriend did say she was doing one of Martha Stewart's cooking boxes. You heard of those? Like those delivery boxes. Martha gave a chunk of Parmesan and said, shred this, do this. Well, she said she had the bagged pre-shredded stuff. So that day she did it with her bag of stuff. Then she made another one that came and it had the little chunk of Parmesan. She's like, oh, I'm gonna do this here. She said she noticed the difference. Ding, ding. Just saying. Okay, let's go with the green first. Two green pies here. I got all this delicious prosciutto. I like to make them as long as I can. So they get crispy in the oven. If you have them in tiny little wads, little balls, they're not gonna get as crispy. And I'm loading it up. You know, that one slice, you would be doing two when you have two heads going on at once. But that one slice is going to cover both of these really generously. Um, because, I mean, we're all about the toppings, right? This is not about a crispy, buttery, sesame seed crust that's going to give us the flavor on these pizzas. It's the toppings. And the toppings are where we get the nutrients. You're welcome. <laughs> so there we go, I've got that on. Now I'm going for green, the capers. Just tiny, you know, like speckled, almost like you would olives on a pizza. They're not like gonna be blobbed up, just stretch them out, make them pretty. I think pizza is an art form. It really, it, it looks good. You either make it look good or you don't. So I like mine to look pretty. Here we go. Get those little greenies. And so green, not only for the base, the color of the base I chose, the green pesto and the red pesto, but also what I'm adding onto the pie is very green. Last but not least is the fresh basil. And do, do, do. Again, it's pretty generous. Generous, generous with the basil. Okay, here's another side note. If you're not into fresh basil, you just don't like it. Some people just don't like things, cool? I recommend you getting fresh arugula and cooking it without the arugula, but when it's done, put the arugula on so that the steam in those five minutes that you let it sit kind of steams and slightly steams up the arugula, but it's fresh. You're eating it fresh. It's so very good with prosciutto pizza. I One of our favorite places in New York City called Luzzo's. If you're in New York, it's First Avenue between 13th and 14th or between 13th and 12th, either way. Um, it's delicious crisp fired and uh fired pizza what do you say wood fired burning whatever that is a super crisp thin neapolitan style pizza all these crispies 
I, it's warm enough, it's cool enough. I'm just gonna shove them on and then do the pretty work. And I'll load it up, guys. Don't be shy of the good stuff. You got enough here, use it. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of stretch them out with my fingers. Oh, this looks good already. I haven't even cooked it. Okay, pizza night. Pizza night at the Dry Falls. Healthy pizza. Now here's the deal. If your kids are gonna be like, oh, what is under there? I don't wanna eat that. Fine. Your easiest way of getting them the same exact thing and make them their own individual pies is getting like a ciabatta roll or a bag of ciabatta rolls, cut them in half, open them up, season them like you are here or, you know, eliminate what you, your kids won't eat and put it in the oven at this stage. And you don't even need to pre-cook those ciabatta rolls. But, or you could do focaccia. Focaccia is easy too. Some people do pita. I'm not so much of a pita pizza girl. That would be up to you. Okay, now we're going with the red peppers. Adding it to our red pie, making it pretty. Now, you could just pick one of these. You could know in advance right now, ooh, I just hate prosciutto, I wanna gag when I look at that, ugh. You might just make the red pies and that's okay. You might just do you. And I'd love to hear what you do. Share it in the comment fields. So, there we go. And last but not least are these tiny little onions. Doo -doo. And I like to peel them apart. I, the last thing I want to do is bite into a pizza and it tastes just like a wad of onion in my mouth. Ugh. That's, I mean, I like onion. That's why I'm putting it on pizza. But I don't want to just taste onion. And sometimes you get that if you go to Subway, like the sandwich shop, and they're just like piling it on. Sometimes you get that when you have pizza and there's just like a chunk of onion. Um, no thanks. No thanks. I like to stretch mine out, make them delightful. All right. I'm going to show you what it looks like before. It goes into the oven. Are those beautiful or what? Oh, I have to wait for the next ones to finish cooking before I pop these in. When you dollop your steaks and it's time to go in, you're going to put it on the top rack for five, more like seven to eight minutes, depending on how toasted you like to get your cheese. When they come out, the cauliflower already has gotten crispier on the edge. I'm gonna go for the green one first. You can see, I just said pick it up just like a pie. Right, did I tell you that or what? You do, once it comes out of the oven, want it to sit for about five minutes so it's not just a sloppy ball of cheese. And, mmm, mmm, so good. Okay, I don't miss the bread when I bite into this. I don't feel that the cauliflower, being that it's not mixed with a bunch of cheese the way homemade cauliflower crust, I don't feel that that takes away from the level of delicious that this is right here. The capers, although when, when they're just out of the jar, are super pickly, it cooks down in the oven and they're not so sharp anymore. So if you're like, oh, I don't do capers because you've only had them raw, Check it out, try it out. Now I'm gonna go for the red one. Mm, I guess I guess I'm eating pizza for lunch too, not just dinner. Okay, the red pie held together. Now these two were broken pieces. They just wouldn't know it because that cheese kept it together. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Pardon me while I just eat in your face. Um, that red pie right there. The sun-dried tomatoes from the sauce, the pesto sauce under there, are bursting. You bring in a lot of that Italian sausage with the peppers and onions. So if you're a girl like me who likes even a sausage sandwich, you usually load it with peppers and onions. And you'll be so happy with that pie. Now, could you imagine that this was your dinner? This is, it's not a whole head of cauliflower because we had edges that didn't make it into the, to the steaks. But you doing two heads of cauliflower could easily, you might be too full to eat all four of those. But even if you did, you've eliminated so much bread and grain from your diet. You've got yourself a very low carb pizza that didn't take all the time in the world, literally top to bottom 30 minutes. And you can have this uh, ease in your stomach and your conscience for eating some amazing comfort food that has a KJ Kitchen facelift. So 
If this recipe served you, share it to your wall. Share the love, guys. Share it, tag a friend in the comment fields because they could subscribe to my newsletter and get an, a new recipe every week in their inbox too. If you're not on that newsletter yet, I will be posting the link below. Get on that newsletter, free recipe every week to your inbox. Always mindful, realistic eating that's gonna help you on your health journey and your family. I'll see you here every Wednesday here on KJ's Kitchen. Thanks for tuning in and you have yourself a most amazing Wellness Wednesday. I'm heading over right now to my private group, the KJ Fit Club. If you'd like to be in that group, you leave me an emoji, send me a private message. I'd love to be able to get you access where we have more recipes your way, a lot of fun challenges and giveaways, weekly live workouts, and a lot of accountability and support for your health journey. Okay, you have, have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy Wellness Wednesday, guys. Take care.